Joining me to talk about the current law and how it could change if Proposition 36 is passed is Stuart Henry, Director of SDSU, SDSU School of Public Affairs. Thank you, Stuart, for being here. So first, tell us, how did the three strikes law come about in the first place? Right. Well, there's a concern over habitual offenders generally, and there were, in particular, we were at the peak in California of a high, the highest crime rate we've ever experienced. And what happened was there were two particular cases, um, Kimber Reynolds and the case of uh, Polly Class, both um, resulting in homicides of, of um, children, well, in one case Polly Class and a teen in the other. And that was so emotionally charged in the context of the crime rate, people wanted to do something about it and they wanted to stop the ability of people who'd committed previous serious offenses recommitting a serious offense again. So it was designed to protect the public. That was the intent. That was back in the 90s, right? Back in 94 was when that came through. In 93, there'd been a similar law that was passed in Washington state. Correct. So what's been the result in terms of the prison population because of three strikes? Well, it's certainly increased uh, for, for a variety of reasons. Uh, we generally, we're on a getting tough on crime um, model of criminal justice ever since the 90s. Um, the problem with the law is that it has been so um, net widening and all inclusive that People who were on their third strike committing petty offenses, which were uh, could be a store shoplifting of golf clubs or videotapes, were getting sentenced to 25 to life. We've got some numbers on that, actually. Mm. Let, let, let's show the people at home. So right. property crimes. Now, these are people in California prison, third strikers serving life in prison, more than 2,500. Third strike was a property crime, drug crimes more than 1,300, and other nonviolent, 842, so the numbers speak for themselves. Now, what does Proposition 36 aim to change in this law? What it tries, to, it's aiming to do is to bring back proportionality to sentencing, so that if your third strike is a serious or violent offense, then you will be still subject to 25 years to life. Okay, but, so we've got some bullet points. Let's just put those up as you okay. sort of go through them and, and let us know in exactly what this proposition does. So beginning with only serious or violent felonies. Right. So it has to be in that class. If it isn't, then you don't get the 25 years to life. The other element of this that is important is that it allows for resentencing of offenders that have already been sentenced to 25 years for life when their third offense was uh, um, a non-violent, non-serious felony. And also, though, this new, uh, this proposition does allow, though, if a firearm is used in your third right. strike, Correct. then you could go to prison for life. There or are if you've got a prior murder, rape, or child molestation exactly. charge. Okay, so it, it, it casts a wide net, but not as wide no, as it as currently wide, does. And that's the exact point about this. It's trying to rein in some of the um, broad, of sweeping um, capturing of people that and the cost of putting people in prison for those kind of offenses. It's, it, it, one of the problems with this whole approach to criminal justice is it's like if you've got a problem in your house, like you a burst pipe or you've got a broken chair, you know, and call a maintenance guy comes in with a toolbox. Unfortunately, the toolbox for criminal justice consists of a hammer. That's all we use, the same process. What we really need is to, th to do analysis of what the problem is, what the cause of the crime is in each particular case, and apply the appropriate sentence. And a, and a, and a three strikes law, unfortunately, doesn't do that. It's the hammer of criminal justice. But there are people at home who are going to say, look, there are people who do nothing but they, they're, life, they're lifetime criminals mm -hmm. over and over and over. And if you are the victim of that crime, whether it's your house is right, robbed right. or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you probably are sick and tired of this. I mean, what, you know, there, there is an argument to be made. There is. the sick and tired and there's life sentence. I mean, do you want to give someone a life sentence if their offense, though that you'd been victimized, is not that serious? If it's a theft from a store, if it's a theft uh, of golf clubs, what, why are you giving and paying for uh, $50,000 a year to keep somebody in a prison? So we haven't got a lot of time left. Do you think mm -hmm. that maybe this might come down to money when people in California know 
know that we're spending so much of our budget on keeping people in prison for life, do you think at the end of the day they might just vote based on their pocketbook? I hope they vote based on a range of issues, not least of which is the justice issue, because what's wrong with this law as it stands is it's disproportionate sentencing for the offence. The punishment doesn't fit the crime, whereas the money is an additional issue. This is going to result in the 2,800, according to the latest figures, people being reconsidered for resentencing, which is not going to make a great deal of difference on the 136,000 prisoners in the system. We'll have to leave it there. Much more on our website, kpbs.org. Stuart Henry, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you.